Hello, everybody. Let me get a little comfortable. My kitty is somewhere in this room. I don't know where. Oh, there he is. I could not catch him this morning. So, well, this evening, rather. And so he's in here with us. So hopefully that'll work out. All righty. I'm excited for this week's topic. Whoop, whoop. As always, guys, feel free to put any comments in below if you want to add anything to the conversation or if you have any questions. Comments go here. Smiley face. Okay, so let's go ahead and start beginning. So this week's Grow Wealthy Grooming topic is the ROI of taking time off. This is a show where I answer uh, questions about finances and running a successful grooming business. I'm River Lee, your host and the founder of The Savvy Groomer, you know, where I teach pet professionals how to keep more of the money they earn and grow a grooming business that supports their life instead of a, instead of a life that supports their business. If you're seeking these transformations, check out my online course, Personal Finance on a Leash. Um, you know, go ahead to SavvyGroomer.com for any one-on-one -on -one group coaching. Feel free to message me directly. Okay, so let's get started. I have my drinks, so don't mind me. I'm losing my voice a little bit. It's almost Christmas time, which I'm super excited about. But because of that, I'm, I'm pretty burned out. I don't know about you guys. I'm a little burned out at the moment. I am ready for a vacation. So first things first, let's talk about why vacations and time off are important. I know this is going to seem really trivial, but I think it's going to be an important place to start. So I have a three-part series that is called Bur Groomer Burnout is Real. And so I'm just going to touch on the basic points of those blog posts and then direct you if you want any solutions to those to go to those blog posts directly. So I find groomer burnout is mainly because of three points. The first is physical. Those are generally you have back aches, shoulder pain, fatigue, carpal tunnel, etc. Um, the truth is we can't live on Tylenol. Thankfully, because of CBD and medical marijuana, it's been a godsend for a lot of groomers. But if your body is hurting, that's a warning. I never realized how prevalent alcoholism, drug addiction, and pain medication abuse was so rampant in the grooming industry until I became an employer and the more time I spent with other business owners, um, as well as talking with people in corporate, not so much corporate groomers, but more so corporate managers like the Petco, PetSmart, general managers, mentioning how many groomers would come in and fail drug tests. And I honestly believe that the reason that is so high is because a lot of times we're grooming, we're grooming in pain. And instead of taking time off, we're still grooming or worse yet, we have employers that expect us to keep grooming through the pain. You know, I always tell people the example of when I had my son, I worked a full day Saturday, I went into labor Sunday, I had him on Tuesday, and then I was back to work on Saturday. That's insane. Now, I never expected my employees to do crazy things like that. But it's really hard to let someone take six or 12 weeks off from maternity leave, especially because it's not like you're going to be able to fill a groomer for that amount of time. And on the flip side, if we get injured at work, you know, I've been injured at, gr at grooming salons. You know, it's really hard to take time off because if your boss has paid time off, they need you back because they have a full schedule of dogs. You have regular clients. The clients are pressuring you to come back. So it's really difficult to take time off, you know, unintentionally like that because either your bosses wants you back at work or potentially your clients want you back or even you want you back because of finances. So, you know, and that's, that's a big problem, but that's why I believe that there's so much alcoholism and drug abuse in the grooming industry. And I know most people watching this probably don't have those afflictions but I do want to make it a clear point because if you're grooming in pain and you're not getting to the root of the pain, eventually you have to do something. And I don't want anyone to be shamed for having alcoholism or drug addiction. But as grooming, you know, as in the grooming industry, we need to acknowledge that is a fact. And a lot of it is because we just want to pretend like we're not in pain. And we are. There's a lot of physical issues that come with being a groomer. 
And beyond that, just even physical pain. A lot of times we're pushing ourselves to work long hours and grooming more dogs or bigger dogs than you can physically handle, or you're working six or seven days a week. And that's just not sustainable. You know, we wouldn't expect to have any machine be treated this way. You know, Matt, you know, we don't expect our, well, some people do expect, but your blades, like we don't push them past all of that, right? So when things are past their expiration, we send them in to get sharpened or anything like that. And that's so important. You have an organic machine. Hi, everybody. I see wingtip80 says, hi, River. Hello. And Shelly says, hi. Hi, guys. It's great to see you. As always, guys, feel free to put any comments below if you want me to, you know, really touch upon something I'm talking about or if there's something I didn't communicate properly to you guys. So mainly with, if you want to talk about more ways to get help with your physical stuff, I'll put the blog post below. You guys can read it. It's got some great tips on how to deal with physical burnout. The next part of burnout, I feel like, is financial. You know, in the grooming industry, we're full of lots of well-meaning people who love animals with big, giant hearts, but we don't often have our finances together. Um, that's just the truth, right, guys? So, you know, you are working for someone and you're not getting paid well, maybe, or maybe all of your business profits are getting shoveled back into your business or reinvested into your business. You know, financial stress and grooming leads to feeling exhausted. It feels like your job is what I call a J-O-B. Um, I personally believe I have the best job on the planet. It is my passion. But when you're feeling burnt out, it doesn't feel like a passion anymore. It feels like a chore. Um, and what I generally tell people is that, you know, financial stress leads to feeling exhausted. And, you know, it's like you're working lots of hours and it doesn't seem like you're actually getting a benefit. You know, I generally tell people, if I paid you a million dollars, would you keep grooming? And if the answer is, oh my God, yes, then it's not the grooming that's burning you out. It's the finances. Um, and you might say, oh, well, anyone would groom for a million dollars. That's not true. I mean, there are people that really hate grooming. I'm personally not a big fan of dog grooming. I will say at some point, I was like, yeah, I don't want to be grooming dogs the rest of my life. Cat grooming, I really enjoy that. Don't ask me why. I really have always loved more of bath and blow dries, which I know makes no sense. I never really enjoyed scissoring or detail work. And I find with cats, I really enjoy bathing them and they go from like kind of greasy and all of that to being clean. And I felt the same way. Like I found a lot of satisfaction with those once, which is totally against whatever I teach, but there's so much satisfaction with that once a year Husky or Shepherd. And it goes from like this molting, disgusting mess to this beautiful, like, I mean, you can run your fingers through it. So even though that's not the kind of dogs I wanted to groom, there's so much satisfaction in that. And so for me, like I would not do standard poodles for a million dollars a year. Couldn't pay me enough. But would I do well-behaved D sheds for like big dogs that I didn't have to lift? I would have done that. And I would do cat grooming. Well, you know, maybe I don't even need a million dollars. I'm really happy with what I'm making cat grooming. So anyway, back on track. So if you say, yes, I would do this for a million dollars, then again, it's financial, it's not physical, or it's not because you're feeling trapped. If you are finding that your finances aren't where you want them to be, you can go ahead and sign up for my online course, Personal Finance and a Leash. That's a way to change your financial situation in just 12 weeks. It's going to teach you how to make a financial plan with your money so you can keep more of what you make. All right, so the third reason generally people are burnt out is they're feeling trapped. So I did find when I was working for other people that I felt like a rat on a wheel. And I was thinking about why that was. And the more I go to other industries where they're talking about how to handle employees and building cultures, they talk about the glass ceiling. And I mean, a lot of you guys have probably heard of this when it comes to women or in corporate, but there's no upward motion if you're a groomer. Most salons don't have grooming salon managers. 
And unless if you're willing to open up your own business, there's nowhere up. And even opening your own business is a mixed bag of crazy. Let's be real. Like I love being my own boss, but at the same time, it has its own problems, its own struggles. So most groomers have a pay scale that they see in a percentage, which means your pay varies wildly based on dogs and rarely do big dogs and have the same profit margin as small dogs. It really does depend upon your business and the business you work for. So for instance, so if I have two Shih Tzus, it's really that two Shih Tzus, let's say they take the same time as one doodle. It's very rare that that one doodle is charged the same as two Shih Tzus. If I do two $65 Shih Tzus, the doodle is really not $130. I find that a lot of grooming salons, like even the place I take my standard poodle, it's $95 for a standard poodle. I know I could get done two Shih Tzus in the time it takes her. And their prices aren't $45 for that Shih Tzu. So if I were the groomer, I really wouldn't want to do one big dog. I'd rather do two smaller dogs, which are less effort on my back and probably less effort on my hands. Um, hang on one second. Yes, yeah, Shelly is saying, or a vet tech glass ceiling. Exactly. So, you know, you have that where there's nowhere to go up. So if you're a vet tech, that's a perfect analogy as well. Unless if they're going to go to vet school, there's nowhere for them to go up. And generally speaking, you generally cap out at how much you're going to make. So I want you guys to really think about that. Um, and also, if you're working for somebody else, less so if you're working for you, because if you work for you, you have a little bit more flexibility in your life. But if you work for somebody else, every day you come to work, you set your stuff up, and you get a full day of dogs or cats, whatever you're doing. And the problem with that is every day is like Groundhog Day. Every day you come in, there's a full new set of dogs. There's a full new set of cats. And it's just constant. At no point could you, the day before, get some extra work done. That way you can have an easier day tomorrow. Now, you could have a heavier schedule today and a lighter schedule tomorrow. But that's not the same. Um, it was really interesting. I did this amazing training. And again, it was primarily meant for people outside of our industry. It really wasn't for the grooming industry. But what it was talking about is how allowing your staff to do more on Thursday and leave early Fridays. And it was talking about they obviously had the weekends off. And it said that it increased productivity because generally people would actually start on Wednesday getting things done early. And then Thursday, and a lot of people would have everything done on Friday. And on that Friday, they would be more likely to do extra work. And I thought that was so fascinating the way that works. And the truth is that there's no way of doing that in the grooming industry. You can only do as many dogs as you physically can. There is no catching up on work. Your work is your body. You can't rush dogs. There are ways to do more dogs based upon different elements. Like you can buy a better dryer. You can buy better products, etc. But it's if you're like, I'm a five to six dog person. That's as many dogs as I like to do in a day. I can do seven. I can do eight. I might be able to do 10, but that's really pushing it. And so for me, you know, I can't do 10 today and then nothing tomorrow and feel good. I can't. I will feel like crap the next day and barely be able to walk. You know, unlike an office worker in another industry where they're able to do all that work from Friday on Thursday. So again, that makes you feel like a rat in a wheel because you're never going to catch up. You're never going to get ahead. There's no way to do that. Um, so again, you feel like there's no traction. And in my blog post, if you're feeling trapped and you could be trapped also because you're owning your own business and there's a lot of pressure from your own business. Again, the blog post talks more about how to solve that. So again, I'll put those links below um, when I get off. And with that, I want you guys to realize that there are a lot of reasons you may feel like you're burnt out. And so this is why it's important of taking time off. So let's talk about how much it's going to cost you to take a vacation. Shelly's saying for extra money, people say you should pet sit. No, I'm burnt out. And after too many years, I need a life. Well, what's interesting about pet sitting, I found, and again, everyone can tell me their own opinion, is that you're not going to make enough money doing it. Very rarely am I going to make enough money. Um, that's actually why I had owned a pet sitting company and I sold mine 
because a especially with things like Rover and all these other products, you know, they're basically Uber for pet sitting. You can't compete. So they're not going to pay you, depending upon where you live, $45 for an hour's worth of work, because it's going to take me time to get there, see the pet and go home. And you need to figure out where your money is actually being made. You have a skilled trade that's going to be worth a lot more than pet sitting. And the more you get off in the beaten path, the more struggles you're going to have. You're only one person. And I find that when people are like, oh, I'm going to add this and oh, I'm going to add that. Well, you're stretching yourself really thin and you're, you know, you're diluting your brand as well. Because if I'm going to, you know, go and like, let's say keep dogs overnight, you know, I'm adding liability and I'm adding a lot of things that I'm not actually prepared to do. So let's say, you know, if you're essentially boarding at your house, well, your house designed for boarding You know, if something bad happens, are you prepared for the liability? So again, you need to, you know, how do I say this? Yes, make money, but don't think that every opportunity is the right opportunity for you. And your time is money, but it's also you need to take it easy and take care of yourself. So again, let's talk about the cost of a vacation. And I'm not talking about how much money you need to spend to go away. Um, Let's pretend you're doing a staycation. And for those of you guys that have never been broke enough to have a staycation, that is like Netflix for a week. It is like, although Disney Plus is awesome. Have you guys seen The Mandalorian? I'm not a super Star Wars person, although I did see the new movie. But I mean, that is something I could sit there and just eat Cheetos and watch. Um, Popcorn and crunchy Cheetos are my thing and cheese balls. Like, I don't know why that's disgusting, but I just love them. So, all right. Sorry guys got off the beaten path. So I want to talk about first what your overhead is. Um, for those of you guys that have never heard of what an overhead is, basically it's all of your business bills. And I'm talking specifically at the moment to your business owners, but employees listen too because I want you to hear about when your employer takes a week off, how much it costs them. This is important too, because you know, whether you're an employee or an employer, we need to start respecting each other a little bit more. So business owners, when you're closed for a week, let's talk about your monthly overhead. How much is your monthly overhead? Now, I don't want you to include payroll. And I understand things have ebb and flow. I know some months your electricity is going to be a little bit higher or your heat or anything like that. But let's get your average overhead. And in my example, I use $2,000. And I really wish right now I had a whiteboard. And I'm so sorry, guys, that I don't. I was going to write down it on a piece of paper and show you guys. However, unfortunately, it ends up getting reversed. And that is not helpful. So what I'm going to do really quick is actually in the comments, if you guys want to see, I will be adding in the numbers. That way you guys can see it, that you are here live. So I'm going to use the example of $2,000 a month in overhead. Um, That's basically what my shop was, was about $2,000 a month in overhead. So, oh, it's not going to let me, let me copy. So first things first, I'm going to do $2,000 a month and I'm going to times that by 12 months because there's 12 months in the year. And that's going to be $24,000 a year is my overhead. So what I'm going to do then is take that $24,000 And I'm going to divide that by 52 weeks. So at $24,000 divided by 52 weeks a year, that means my overhead is $462 a week. So obviously this is rounded up a little bit. We're not getting into change. I I even wanted to like round it up a little bit cleaner, but like 462 is not that bad. So in this example, this business owner, it would cost them $462 a week, whether they're open or closed. And that's a good number to know. Um, And again, for those of you guys that are employees, you have to think about this. If they close, it doesn't mean they don't have to pay their rent. They still have to pay any of the bills that come up. So imagine employees, if you left work, it didn't just lose the money you were working, but you also had to pay your employer to leave. And that's what it's like for us business owners to take a week off. All right. So hold off on everybody that is uh, employees 
because next we're going to go into you guys. So first things first, business owners, I know you're going to add your salary in, but hold off because we're going to do that with the employees. And I want you to add in your overhead with your salary. Okay. So employees, what is your average income? And I understand that, you know, it's going to be kind of all over the place. Um, you know, here in New England, January and February, we're dead. Um, we're dead because it's snowing. It's terrible out. It's cold, you know, versus if you're in Florida, you may have an increase in people because obviously it's going to, you're going to have snowbirds. It's going to be warmer. All the people that are rich enough to leave us are going to go to Florida. So obviously going to have ebb and flows like that. So it's important for you to figure out the ebbs and flow of your area. Um, you should know generally if you've been grooming more than a couple of years, like I know we're really busy in spring when it starts getting warm, we get all those once a year shave downs or twice a year shave downs. They're generally in my area, April, generally April, you know, May, they come in for a 10 strip. And then if they're twice a year, they might come again, you know, in July to get another 10 strip, um, things like that. You know, you might know your area. Now, if you are in somewhere very warm, you may be dead all summer because people don't want to leave the house because it's so warm. So know your area. So employees. First of all, if you're an employee, you're not a self-employed groomer. So let's clarify that. If you're self-employed, if you're an independent contractor, a one groomer owner, or a business owner, please make sure you do your overhead because if you're an independent contractor, there should be some sort of, it gets complicated. Technically, you should be a booth renter and not just take a percentage because if you are, it's a misclassified employee. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole, but make sure you know your numbers. So with our employees, that means you're going to have a W-2. Uh, and for you guys that are misclassified employees, you'll have a 1099. So misclassified employees, I'm really sorry. Bear with me. Empl employees with W-2s. If you don't know the ebb and flow, so in a perfect world, you'll know, let's say December. I know in December, the first week, I'm a little slower. The two weeks, the two two weeks before Christmas, the week of Christmas, and the week after. So first week, I'm quiet. Then I'm busy. Then I'm busy. Then I'm dead. So I know that because I've been grooming over 10 years. Baby groomers, you don't know that yet. You'll learn that really quick. So I know my numbers in December are going to be really weird compared to January, which are going to be completely different than March. Everybody's different. So if you don't know your ebbs and flow, what I want you to do is just take your W-2. And in this example, this employee makes $50,000. So what I'm going to have them do, and again, I will copy and paste this in the comments, is I'm going to take their income. And again, you guys can get into your before tax and after tax, however you want to do it, you do whatever you want to do. I would personally ideally do your after tax, but you can do your before tax if depending upon what rate of tax you're at. And I don't want to get crazy because some of you guys are paying 5% tax and some of you guys are paying, you know, 30%, especially depending on the state. So I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole. We're going to get really simple because we're live and we don't have a whiteboard. So again, guys, this employee makes $50,000 a year. We're going to divide that by 52 weeks. So we're going to assume that they are earning $962 a week. Now, that means if they don't get any paid time off or any vacation pay, it's going to cost them $962 a week. Um, and my math, I did not put together. So let's say this grooming salon owner paid themselves $50,000 a year. I'm going to add my two numbers together really quick. Boop, 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 whoop. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. See? That's what happens when things are live. Get the real truth. Boop, boop. Boop. Okay. So this, if you were the grooming salon owner and you had the overhead of $462 a week and you paid yourself a salary of $50,000, that means that you would, it would cost you $1,424 a week to take time off. Now, that's a lot of money. A lot of you guys are like, oh my goodness, that's not even before you hit the cruise. That is not 
you know, you haven't gone to Disney, you haven't done anything. So let's talk about why there's any return on investment on taking time off. Because a lot of you guys are looking at these numbers like, holy crap, that's a lot of money. So let's talk about it. I know it's really expensive to take time off, but why is it important? Your body is an organic machine. We talked about clippers, blades, dryers, everything. You have to maintain everything. Now, the majority of us are not maintaining ourselves monthly. Ironically, we expect people to get their pets groomed every four to six weeks, but we don't take our own advice. So if I have a dog, and I have a standard poodle, everyone knows that, and I do not get my standard poodle done every four to six weeks, what happens? My dog gets matted. I'm going to have to shave my dog etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Even if I brush my dog, I don't know who these people are. Like, I mean, who really, honestly, honestly, brushes their dog every day and combs it out. There are people, but you must not have a life like that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I don't I don't want to spend an hour a day brushing my standard poodle. That is way too much effort. So that said, if I am going to bring my dog in every four to six weeks, when was the last time you guys got a massage? When was the last time you guys went to the chiropractor? When was the last time you guys did things that your body needs to be maintained in a healthy way? Um, you should be going to the, ideally, to the massage therapist who, not foo-foo massage. I mean, massage that's going to work out the kinks, align you once a month, at least every six weeks. We don't. So your organic machine starts to break down. What does it cost you in the long run? to not have your organic machine break down. So if your clippers break, you can go to the store and buy a new pair of clippers. Most of us have three or four pairs, right? We have three or four pairs because we don't generally take very good care of them. We're not sending them out when they need to. Um, I have three Bavuras exactly for that reason because I don't maintain them very well. I'm sorry, sharpeners, don't. I can't even tell you the last time I sent them to wall. I have no idea. And I use them every day. I know. Oh, bad. I'm a, oh, well, this is just the truth. Hashtag truth. Your body is the only thing that you take with you your entire life. Your body is an organic machine. So the ROI if I take two weeks off a year, now two weeks can either be two vacations or two weeks sick time. Um, two weeks sick time would be a bit extreme, but as we get older, things start to break down. Let's talk about how much it would cost you to retire early. So I'm going to do my best to do the numbers in here. Okay. Okay. And I promise what I'm going to do later is I'm going to hopefully try to make, actually, I can't promise. I will do my best to make these into infographics on the YouTube channel later. I appreciate everyone here live to deal with this. So let's say, for instance, you don't take any time off and you get burnt out. Um, I would say the average grooming, actually, it's pretty statistic. Five years is the average that people are in our industry. That's not a lot of time. And it's because they're burnt out. They're physically exhausted. They've been working six or seven days a week. They've been grooming 10 dogs a day when they're really a six dog person and they're pushing through it. So how much would it cost them to stop grooming after five years instead of, let's say, 10? You know, let's just do the math. If it's $50,000 a year, right, let's times that by five years. Ready, guys? I mean, we can all do this really quick. Five years. Don't mind me. So, now let's take into account the five years that they took the two weeks off. We're even going to include the groomer right there, right? I'm going to times that by five. So you guys can see where my math is at. Okay. 
Okay. So it's going to cost them to take two weeks off a year. It's going to cost them $7,120. However, if most groomers could physically groom another five years at least, and that's pretty generous. Let's be real here. I've been grooming 10 years. I could probably groom if I hadn't, if I hadn't had all of the stupidity that I did, which was lifting dog. I'm five one. I'd say, well, I tell you I'm five two, but I'm really five one. I'm really short. I'm really petite. And I would lift dogs that weigh as much as I do. And I did that because it was a busy Saturday and everybody else was busy. And what was I going to do? Not groom the dog. You know, if you have like a fat golden that's on the table and it doesn't move, what are you going to do? You're going to make it lift up. You know, if you have a dog that's like doing this and you've got to groom it, you just move around and you do all the things that they tell you not to do at seminars. Why? Because you're only human and you've got to get your job done. You can't stop everything in the middle of the grooming day. That's just the truth. So had I taken better care of my body, because I didn't take two weeks off. Um, I worked when I was sick. I told you guys, I st- like my son was, I opened my shop up four days before my son was born. I worked a full Saturday. I went into labor Sunday. I had him on Tuesday and I went back to work the next Saturday. That's insane. And because of that, there are physical ramifications. So every time you don't take two weeks off, how many years off your grooming career are you taking? And I want you guys to really think about that. You know, what is the return on investment? The groomers that you see that are healthy, that are grooming 20, 30 years, it's because they regularly took time off. Um, I mean, a lot of them do invest that time into taking seminars. Uh, One of the most underrated seminars is the seminars that talk about using scissors properly, using your body properly. That helps prolong it. But if you never take any time off, you're going to take time off your grooming career. So if you're going to take time off, let's say, for example, um, one of the best examples I have is I had actually had a really, really, really bad bite. I had a dog at Yorkie, ironically, bite through right here, thankfully on my left hand. And obviously, like it went all the way up. And how much time do you guys think I took? You know, how much time do you guys think I took off? Do you think I took off a day, an hour, a week? How much time did the doctor tell me to take off? The doctor told me, you know, you're going to have to be on antibiotics. You know, don't get it wet. Don't get hair in it. Don't get dirt in it. And so I'm literally grooming, like, because I just literally, like, super glued my hand together, wrapped it up, and kept grooming. How insane is that? So what does that lead? What is that? What happens? So for those of you guys that don't groom cats, this is your clipper arm, obviously. This is your scruffing arm. So if you, which I know it sounds really archaic if you don't groom cats. I'm not saying you don't scruff them all the time. It's not like that. But if you have a really vicious cat, even in an air muzzle, you have to pull the cat's head back. Otherwise, it's going to maul you. You know, or like, you know, claws from the face, claws from the face. So this is damaged. This is permanently damaged. This is nerve damage done. And was it from the bite? A little bit. What it was more from was getting an open wound infected because I super glued my hand back together and then I went right back to work. I didn't even go to the doctor till after I super glued my hand together because it was a Thursday. And I was like, if it's still really bad, I'll go to the doctor on Sunday. And so by Sunday, it's infected. And they're like, you need to take time off. And I'm like, I can't afford to. I can't do that. What am I going to do? Knock room, call my clients. How am I going to do that? And because of that, there is permanent nerve damage in my hand from a Yorkie bite. It was my fault too. The dog was freaking cage aggressive. And I reached my hand in like an idiot. And the dog was done. The dog was done. That's what happens every time. The dog's done. And then you get bit. And you're like, God damn it. It's never, it's, you know. But yeah, so my hand's permanently damaged. So how much time am I going to be able to keep grooming cats? Probably a lot less than if I had taken a few days off. If I had left work on that Thursday, gone home, and taking care of this, I'll, I would have probably been able to groom cats an extra couple years. 
because eventually this hand is going to get much, I have carpal tunnel, which is fine, but I have dirt nerve damage. That's a lot different. That is career ending stuff. And eventually, you know, I'm in my early thirties guys. I'm not going to be grooming into my fifties. I'll be lucky if I'm grooming into my forties because of how much crap I did to my body and didn't take any time off. Think about that. All of these times I should have taken a day off. And instead of taking a day off, I am now permanently getting damaged. Um, Shelly said none. Exactly. See, Shelly, you knew me. You know I didn't take a flipping day off. I didn't even leave to go to the hospital. Didn't leave in the hospital. Um, waited three days because I had a full day Thursday, a full day Friday, and a really long day Saturday. And the end of Saturday, I'm like, I'm too tired to go to the, to the doctor. So Sunday, I'm literally like, you can, it was, it was green. So whenever I tell you guys not to do these things, it's not because I'm judging you. It's because I'm looking back at me and I'm going, girl, I know why you're doing this, but please don't do this. Like, please don't. I did that. I know what happened. Wingtip 80 saying seven years grooming six days a week. My left shoulders bother me more all the time. And it's going to keep bothering you. Part of it is, guys, let's go a little bit beyond taking time off. Maintenance. What are you doing to take care of you? You know, we have to take care of our organic bodies. I'm really bad with taking care of my clippers and my, like, I've never changed the brushes on my dryers. I've literally never. I'm so bad. I just wait till they blow up and then I send them. So, like, I'm, like, the once a year, like, the sharpener and those people don't like me, but I'm just, yeah, that's not my thing. Um, but your body is what you take with you. This is the instrument you have to keep together. Part of that is taking time off. Part of that is taking a day off. If you're injured to rest your body, you know, you can slowly feel it. So, um, I don't know how many of you guys have known my, and I'll be a little anecdotal, the story of, um, Long story short, what happened is a couple of days after Christmas, I, it was when I had my shop, I couldn't lift my hands above my head. My son was three and I wanted to go pick him up and my shoulders were so tight and in pain. I couldn't lift up my three-year-old son and, you know, we were putting things away and I literally couldn't lift my hands above my head. Like I couldn't do this, couldn't do this. Could not do it because of my shoulders, um, my my shoulder blades. Everything was just jacked up. Um, and it wasn't even like it hurt so much I couldn't do that. Um, oh, hi, Aaron. Sorry. So I never know when people says it. So I'm just going to call everybody your username. You have a cool username. I don't. Savvy Groomer. What? So, Aaron, good to see you, my dear. Um. Yeah, I couldn't lift my hands above my head. And the problem with that, which sounds really bullshit, but I was like, I don't want to live this way. I was in my late 20s. That's nuts. It's nuts to be in your late 20s and not be able to lift your hands above your head. And what other industry is that like? We are like, you know, construction workers. And even then they get paid bank and people respect them a little bit. And they, have, you know, something. But I know some days I'm like, ugh. Um, whenever I go to conferences outside the grooming industry, I hate how they're just unintentionally condescending. It drives me crazy. But anyway, I digress. So I couldn't lift my hands above my head. So what did I do? I ended up needing to go to a personal trainer because I had changed all of my muscles into the wrong shape. Um, I had to get a massage once a week for about six months because they had to undo all of the ways. So the muscles literally, and the way the personal trainer, he had touched my back. He's like, do you feel how your shoulders, like your muscles are here? And I said, yes. He's like, you're supposed to be here. And it, oh, he's like, yes. So what we have to do is we have to get the massage therapist to lessen the muscles here in order for them to be able to grow here, but also loosen up enough that they can grow here. Um, so I did a lot of damage to my body and I didn't, for the first four years I owned my shop, 
I didn't take a single vacation. Um, I might be closed for a few extra days, but I didn't take a vacation. I didn't take any time off. And because of that, I did a tremendous amount of damage to my body in a very short period of time. And some of it is very unfortunately, my family's prone to carpal tunnel. Um, my grandmother had her both of her hands done twice with carpal tunnel. And then my dad worked in appliance repair and both of his hands had been done for carpal tunnel. So I'm you know predisposed for that. But also the fact that I'm little, like, I don't know about some of you guys, like some of you guys are really petite, like I'm short, but like, I'm kind of built like a fjord horse, you know, or like a little Shetland pony. Um, I, I, I don't want to say bulldog. I don't want to be like mm, bulldog, but like, yeah, like I'm short, but I'm stocky, but I'm not useful like a pit bull. Like I couldn't pull anything. I'm not like strong. I'm just short and thick. And some of you guys are like little tiny, like spindles, like where you're a hundred pounds soaking wet and you're shorter than me or, you know, so the reason I'm pointing that out is yes, I'm all about girl power, but I'm also about not doing things physically to your body for you to permanently regret it. So I want, though, the whole point of this is the return on investment for your time off. I am working on some worksheets for you guys to be able to do this math on them. I promise to have them in the next couple of days and I will post a link below to be able to get them. Um, what I want you guys to do is to honestly think about when you don't take a day off because you're injured, when you do not take a day off because you're sick, when you do not take a day off because you're emotionally burnt out, when you do not take a day off or a vacation because whatever reason. Um, I'm a big fan. I always took a long weekend after Thanksgiving because I don't want people, I don't want people to bring dogs in that the dog ate everything from Thanksgiving. All it does is have projectile diarrhea that day. Whole weekend. Not, you know, you're not, I'm not getting dogs with pet turkey leftovers or like tubs of gravy. You know, and I always take off between Christmas Eve day. This year I took off today because it just seems silly not to. But, you know, Christmas Eve day, and I take it all the way till the 2nd of January. Because it gives me time to spend time with my family and my son and put me first and let my body relax. Now, my body's a lot better now that I'm mobile, which means that I make more money and do less. And I do cats, which means that I have, generally cats are under 17 pounds. And if you're a CFMG like I am, and you know what you're doing, Cats are significantly easier than dogs. Most of my clients are bath and blow dries, a couple of comb cuts. I don't really do any line cuts anymore. And I make between $100 and $165 per cat. So I can do five cats and I make more money doing five cats mobile than I was doing a lot of dogs in my shop. But I created my business in that way because I know that between a fractured back, because I got T-boned in a car accident, yay, and the fact that I've abused my body so much that my body needs more time off. It needs more care. I go monthly to get a massage. Um, I just went to my chiropractor today. And when I'm busier, I go once a week, which really is expensive. But again, I have to look at what's the ROI. Going to the chiropractor once a week is a hell of a lot cheaper than, you know, grooming five years less. So look at those numbers and every time you're not going to do that, I want you to think about how much time that's going to take off at the end um, or lifestyle. I mean, one thing we never talk about is these groomers that have been grooming 20, 30 years and they're basically crippled. It breaks my heart when I, so as you guys know, with like savvy groomer, I primarily deal with people that are making a lot of money, but you know, they don't know what they're doing with it. And that's what personal finance and leash is all about is really making your money work for you. And I meet a lot of groomers who have been grooming 20, 30 years, and then they end up being personal coaches with me. So I do business coaching as well. So we end up doing business coaching because they need to start taking that money and funneling their grooming business down because they were doing a lot of big dogs and they weren't taking care of their body. And let's say their grooming business was 50% large dogs and now their body can't take it anymore. And now they have to funnel all of that down. Well, a lot of them could have been able to groom another 10, 15 years 
if they had done this earlier or if they had just taken more time off. Um, there's one of these in Texas and she's mobile and I adore her. And we were talking and she just didn't take a day off. She works six days a week and the seventh day was basically paperwork. And she had an issue with her health. And I don't want to, in case anyone knows her, I don't want to bring it up. But she had an issue with her health. And she had no savings. She, you know, she had to completely cut out a whole amount of her clientele. Which means that she actually lost a lot of money. And it was all completely avoidable by taking more time off, taking better care of herself. And it was really hard to watch someone's hard work and building up a business and sacrificing, basically almost losing it all. And I see that a lot more where I am. And I know you guys like talk to people in Facebook groups, but what I find is people always posture in Facebook groups. People are always like trying to, like the math doesn't work. When you do the math with people, you're like, I make $25 an hour making 50%. You're like, yeah, but you do, you know, like, you know, they, it doesn't make sense. You're like, wait, you're making $25 an hour. And you're like, so you're making this a year. And they're like, no. And you're like working 40 hours a week. The math just doesn't add. Um, Shelly's saying, I want a longer van and a bather. It's all about what you want. Um, but you have to be able to save for that. And part of that is always, and you know, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but that's about saving and having your personal finances under control. And I always think about, like I always said leash and it's funny because I'm going to be a dork. So I always think of like most groomers with your finances. I'm really sorry guys, but it's either like that dog that's like running around and you're like, why am that dog on a leash or worse? You're like, no, I got this under control. It's literally like you're flexi leashing your finances. And then you're like, it's fine. It's fine. He's on a leash. It's like, no, you're just have no control at all. It's just pissing all over my shop. What are you doing? I would have rather have been off the leash because then if I had grabbed it and scooped it up and put it in the kennel, you wouldn't have bothered me. But yeah, a lot of you guys don't like you make a list of bills, which is not a budget. That's not a budget. It's a list of bills. It's a, it's a to-do list for your money and none of us do to-do lists. Like even if you pretend you're going to do a to-do list no one actually accomplishes it. So you're literally just, you're not making a plan. You're not anticipating other things. You're not having large savings. We all need three to six months minimum of an emergency fund. We need to work on paying off debt. We need to start saving for retirement. No one's talking about this in the grooming industry. It is so important. It is so incredibly important. And it's things like we focus on, you know, if you want a large van and a bather, well, how much money do you have set for retirement? How much money do you have in an emergency fund? How much personal debt do you have? Have you worked on paying that off? So I know it's a lot of things that are a little off the beaten path, but I always want you guys to be thinking about that because the career ending bite can be tomorrow. That's the unfortunate thing. Um, there are way too many groomers that you know, like I, I'm a perfect example. I'm very blessed between, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I lost twins at 20 weeks. It was very tragic. Um, between that and a car accident that, you know, fractured my back, I can't groom anything over 20 pounds ever again. It's not an option. Um, I don't want to be emotional about it, but um, so you know, I can't go back and work for somebody else because no one's going to hire a groomer who can't groom more than 40, over 20 pounds. What, imp what groomer is going to hire someone like that? Maybe another cat grooming place, but that would require me to move. And well, I'm very grateful I had already narrowed down my business. If I hadn't, I would have been screwed, screwed. And I'm an example, and there's lots of examples out there of people in similar situations, guys. And I want you to really start taking care of yourselves. Please, 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 please start taking care of yourselves. Let's start with some time off. I'm really hoping you guys are going to be taking some time off after Christmas, even if it's a couple of days. Even if this, this year is great, you know, take the eve off, the day off, take a few days off. Relax. Enjoy yourself. Let your body heal. 
you know, get some massages. Sounds really cliche. Do some yoga. Um, I'm always surprised with yoga, how inflexible I am. I always think like, I'm like, oh, I'm fit. I can stand all day. I groom, do one minute of yoga. I'm like, mm -mm, this sucks. Like, like I really want to be like that, like person that's like, I'm all into yoga. But I'm like, I hate, I hate exercise. I can really set myself on fire than exercise. But I have to take care of my body, blah, blah, blah. I'd rather be eating Cheetos and Netflixing than working on yoga. But there's only so much you can do. So I don't want to keep rambling, guys. Um, I always really appreciate my time. If you guys have any more questions, please go ahead and answer that while I wrap up. You know, I the main thing I want to point out, and again, I will be working on making you guys a worksheet. That way you guys can do your own math because I know everyone's numbers are going to be so different. You know, know how much it's going to cost you to take time off. Because once you know that number, you can do things like a sinking fund, which is a savings fund specifically for that time off. Or, you know, whatever it is, go ahead and put all your tips in a jar and the tip jar is going to be that money, whatever it is that you guys want to do. But go ahead and do that. Um, that's going to really help you guys. Um, and then when you do that, you know how much it's going to cost you. Because then on the flip side, I want you guys to say, okay, especially if you get yourself injured, that's one of the biggest ones. But even then you have an organic machine. I want you guys to think about if I don't take a single week off this year, what's that going to cost me in the long term? We think it's nothing. We think we're invincible. Anybody over 25 knows your body starts to break down. It blows. You know, we wake up. I threw my hip out the other day. I don't know how I did that. Just getting out of bed. Not that old. It's just going to get worse from here. How much time is that going to end your career sooner? Because if I said to you, and you might be like, never, but I want you to think about it from somebody else. If you had someone in your life who's a friend, who's a groomer, who said, yeah, I'm not taking any time off. I'm not, I'm going to work six days a week. And the seventh day, I'm going to do paperwork. I'm not going to take a single day off. And because of that, do you think it's not going to take a year off your grooming career? And what are you going to do after grooming? Have you decided? Every time you don't take time off, add a year. That's going to come off the back end. And figure out what it is that you want to do after you groom. Because if you're not going to take care of yourself now, then you're going to have to get a second career. And I hope that career is something you love as passionately as grooming. And I hope that You know, I don't, I don't want to see people leaving grooming to go do a soulless corporate job that they don't love. That would be the worst. That really would be the worst. Um, Shelly's asking for more tips on IRAs. I would love to do a Grow Wealthy Grooming on IRAs if you guys are interested. I would love to do a basic video on the basics of an IRA. Um, I never tell anything super specific because the market and the, everything changes every year. But I'd love to go over more information about IRAs. That would be fun. I would love to do that. If you are interested, I love this stuff. Um, so, guys, uh, Shelly and other guys, if you guys want that, I would love to do that. I'm always taking ideas about what to do next. I have lots of information in this head. I just oh, don't know what you guys want to know. So... I want to thank you guys all so much for being here today. I hope this was helpful. I know maybe it's a little bait and switch because your guys like, wait, what? But the truth is you're going to, groom. you know, the ROI is that you get to groom longer and do what you love longer. And so because of that, that's where the true ROI is. You know, in this example, I don't even think I did it. Hang on. So we we figured out it was going to cost her. I'm trying to look at the little notes here. Yeah. So in this example, she's going to groom five years less, which let's be honest, we did it pretty quick, but that's not uncommon. Like I, I've taken at least, at least 10 to 15 years off of my grooming, at least 15, to 10 years. I will not be grooming in my sixties. There's no way. 
I'll be lucky if I'm grooming in my 50s. I'll be lucky if I'm grooming past 45. I really don't think I will. I have damaged my body that much. So in this example, this person took five years off of their grooming. And let's say they were only grooming, you know, five years. And again, that's on the realistic numbers. You could make it 10 years and then five years off the grooming. That's realistic. I have definitely taken at least five years off my grooming um, in the 10 years that I've been grooming, which is really sad. So I'm going to take the 71, 20. So my ROI, if I had actually taken care of myself, would have been $242,880. That's a lot of money for me not taking care of myself. You know, I could have hired a lot of employees with that money. I could have had a long, healthy career with that money. And it's probably more than that because I definitely beat the tar out of my body. So as usual, guys, I really appreciate you being here. This is the actual time I'm going to end it. And Shelly, I will definitely follow up with an IRA video. I'm going to get some stuff together. I don't know if that would be best as a Grow Wealthy Grooming show or if that would be best as a um, blog post because that's a lot of information. So I will play with that. Oh, Merry Christmas, Shelly. Merry Christmas, everybody. I love Christmas and I hope you do too. Um, Christmas is always kind of a tough time for me. My dad's birthday was Christmas day and we lost him nine years ago. And this is the first Christmas. I feel like it's really Christmas again. Um, it's been tough, you know, and it's funny cause you think you're going to get over these things and I don't feel like you ever really get over them. I think you just learn how to be happy with them. So I really hope you guys have an awesome Christmas. Um, I'm going to see my kid. He's going to have like a super duper uber Christmas. Like, you know, that's always fun. He's going to be nine in April. So Christmas is not as fun as it was when he was like three or four, but it's still fun. It's still, he's still doing Santa. I think he's faking Santa at this point, but I'm okay with that. I only got one. So let's do the Santa thing as long as we can. Um, you know, Shelly, I hear you. Like it doesn't, it's tough. It's tough to know how long you're going to groom. And I'm hoping at, you know, Shelly's 48. I'm hoping you have many, many, many more years. I am not because I beat the shit out of my body. And that's very unfortunate. You know, I wish I could tell you otherwise. Um, and I, all I can do is teach people the wrong way to, <laughs> when you've done things wrong, like I have, it's like, well, let me help share my knowledge. Um, you know, and as always, I want to welcome you guys to always with Savvy Groomer, consider joining our, my online course, which is a 12 week course called Personal Finance and Leash. We are now currently having that open all the time due to popular demand. And then we go through as a boot camp twice a year. So you're welcome to join if you want to start your transformation today. You can go to my website, SavvyGroomer.com, and go ahead and join Personal Finance and Unleashed. Um, and then if you are interested, like I said, in one-on-one -on -one business coaching or group coaching, feel free to message me directly. All right, guys, as always, happy grooming.